Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for this online workshop of the new Amy B. Horn Syllabus and Publications. My name is David Howell, and in, in addition to being the project officer of the Horn Syllabus Review, I am the typesetter and reprint manager in the Amy B. Publications team. Very shortly, Isaac Clark, the syllabus consultant for the Horn Review, will, pre will be presenting a workshop on level one of the new Horn Syllabus, including the syllabus itself, as well as the new publications and resources available. As syllabus consultant, Isolt had primary responsibility for the review of the manual lists, the selection of works for the new grade books, and orchestral excerpts and construction of the new technical work. However, the syllabus review process involved a number of horn specialists from around the country. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank the entire team for their dedicated work on the project. Daryl Paulson, who reviewed every aspect of the new syllabus in detail, and especially as advisory group, Tina Brain, Linda Hewitt, and Julia Toussaint Jackson, who provided expert feedback on every aspect of the syllabus. Additionally, I'd like to thank Adrian Hallam, who composed the new site reading. During this workshop, ESOT will take you through level one repertoire and technical work featured on the new Horn syllabus. If you have any questions throughout the course of the workshop, please feel free to type them in the chat or Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom window and we'll do our very best to answer them either during the course of the workshop, if possible, or at the end if time permits. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Amy B. Horn consultant, Isar Clark. Isar Clark is an acclaimed performer and educator based in Brisbane, Australia. Born in Canberra, Isar studied at the Canberra School of Music and was appointed principal third horn of the Queensland Symphony Orchestra at age 21. Since leaving the QSO, Isar has been engaged regularly as a freelance horn player and has appeared with most of the major symphony orchestras around Australia. She is also committed to chamber music and performs with Camerata, Queensland's premier chamber ensemble. Isolt has worked with many ensembles, including Southern Cross Soloists, Elysian, and Lunaire Collective, performing in festivals throughout Australia as well as internationally. Isolt is passionate about music education at all stages of development, from beginner to embarking professional. She works with students of all ages and experience with the aim of building confident, well rounded musicians. For the past 20 years, Isolt has been part of the renowned horn teaching team at the Queensland Conservatorium, Griffith University. Here, she also co-directs the horn ensemble Q Horns and has conducted performances in Queensland, the United States and Brazil. In addition to this, she teaches at several Brisbane schools and runs her own highly successful private teaching studio. Isolt has been a brass examiner for the MEB Queensland for the past 15 years. Welcome Isolt. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Tell us about the new horn syllabus. Hi, David. Thanks so much for that introduction. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you today. Um, and thanks so much for all of your help. Um, today, this afternoon, um, for this first session, I'll be addressing uh, level one in particular. I'm really happy to be discussing some of the changes that have happened with level one and maybe also some tactics in approaching this new uh, work with students. Um, I am really, really interested in answering questions, if, should there be any, um, so please just use that chat function, should there be any questions. Um, but in this level one section, I'll be addressing the technical material first, and f then followed by an overview of the grade books and also some um, points of interest that you might find in the um, slightly changed manual list as well. Um, so, new technical technical workbook it's um, really exciting to see it in place for many many years as horn players we've been sort of piggybacking off the trumpet technical workbook and even that um, the trumpets haven't been using it for a couple of years anyway <laughs> so it's nice to have our own material that actually supports our our development as players um, this technical workbook was created to demonstrate the student's ability to play key technical um, elements at each level of development and also with a mind that these these technical developments will help you move into the next level as well the next grade or the next level um, important goals was just was to emphasize these techniques so for me i found that at level one the main technical goals really consisted pri uh, firstly of creating a really good quality sound over a gradually increasing range. So really 
you know, encouraging a good sound quality um, with a much greater emphasis on slurring, which also not only do we need to slur well, but it also helps with embouchure development. Um, awareness of simple changes to articulation and dynamics. And also just being aware that of building a confident sense of pitch when playing, which is something that often is um, something that needs to be addressed within exams to be able to pitch well. So moving into the exercises, um, the very first exercises, and I'm, I'm going to look at the technical workbook um, across all grades at a time, it's rather than looking at preliminary followed by first grade, because each of the grades has very similar exercises and they've been set up in a bit of a sequence. So for example, the best example of that is that preliminary A, 1A, 2A, 3A and 4A all are sustained note exercises, um, very similar to what was included in the previous syllabus. Um, it's very important in the preparation of this to build a confident sense of pitch. The range itself has been kept quite compact, a little bit less, you know, you're no longer expected to play the highest notes or the lowest notes in sustained, sustained notes. Um, but so a couple of tips when it comes to these exercises, which are very straightforward and great to work on for students. Um, you could always use use um, either sort of a random note generator as an app or even just notes out of a hat so that students start playing a game you could pull an A out of the hat or an F out of the hat and they have to just play that note straight away without using test note to find it um, just so they become accustomed to the idea of playing a note straight away without finding but it's really nice in terms of building confidence that students can breathe well and play these notes with really great sound. The other really important tip is to encourage students to count themselves a full bar in. So if you count that's nice one, two, three, breathe and then play the long note, um, it's, it, it creates a better pace, it's easier to pace out the dynamic contour for those grades for which there is a dynamic contour. Um, so moving on to the B exercises. So this is probably the most exciting part of what's happened with these changes and it's cha it's happened across all the new um, brass syllabuses. And so list B are the lip slur exercises. And as I said before, these, yes, <laughs> it's the first one. And um, so as I said before, they've been created in a bit of a, a sequence. So in, in across into level two as well. So these lip slurs should run into each other um, really nicely. For beginners now, it's a bit more common for beginners to start on B flat side or on F side. There are an option to choose either B flat side or F side lip slurs at these very early grades. It changes slightly at fourth grade, but so you can choose to work on the F side or the B flat side um, options, or perhaps even both. Um, so yes, so that's exercise 1B. And so if we look at exercise 2B with the lip slur, fantastic. Um, this again is just a very, very simple lip slur. Key, key points with this, um, when F side is notated within this book, it has the fingering um, without brackets. And then when B flat side is notated, it was always has brackets. So as these exercises become a bit more complicated, the fingering is also is always very clear. So um, you know, if you see second and third with brackets, you know that it's a second and third fingering on B flat side. And these you are required to play the fingerings as written in the exam. You can't. They need to be lip slurs. Um, but yes, if you look at two B, it's you either play the F side option or the B flat side option. Um, these with um, tips with these slurs is to maybe break into sections, maybe not so important with 2B, but um, bring students into focus with the use of air and a style of, of um, breath between each slur. Um, so if you were doing this one, making sure that the rest themselves have a really, there's a really good awareness in the rest to breathe well in and out. So if it's um. <laughs> So 
it is important to treat the air and the breath in between the slurs as the slurs themselves. Um, if we move on, so 3B is a similar exercise, but we move on to 4B. Fantastic. Um, this, this exercise is very well linked to 5B. So you do 4B and then when you move on to 5B, and even if you're feeling really good about your 4B, it works quite well to, to practice the 5B exercise as well. Um, a couple of little tips with this one. It's quite a standard, um, commonly played slur. Um, I like with my own students to actually add low notes at the end, um, just as a bit of a release, especially if you're doing a lot of playing them. So we have, you know, the option that's not for exam, but it's a really nice way of practicing and releasing. Um, I, I always stress the importance of bringing the students focus to the joins between the notes. This is not an exercise in finding a set of nine separate notes and joining them together without tonguing. This is really bringing, binding these notes together with a really nice flow of air. Um, or always give attention to the very last note of the slur. So that last note also, if you're not going to play the lower notes, you can always play it with quite a long pause so that your air is directed to the very last note that you play. Um, yeah, I think that's that's all with the slurs from um, the, those first levels, but they're just really, um, really fantastic exercises to be demonstrating slurring in the exam situation. Moving on to the chromatic exercises, just briefly. Um, so with horn, we've chosen to move away from the strict one octave chromatic scale and make this these chromatic experience a little bit more value added <laughs> um, so in the lower grades there are just fragments of chromatic patterns which also gives the student to breathe and take a bit of a break between notes um, and acknowledge that there are fingering patterns that we use repetitively we become more familiar with the chromatic movement and within repertoire as well. So you sort of have this, so the fingers learn the patterns of the chromatic scales. And these, these exercises are also used to, as a bit of a range, intentional range expansion. So when preparing the exercises, especially when it gets a little bit higher, you could always do sections of the exercise and then add a little bit as the student becomes more confident and relaxed and plays with a good sound into the high range. Um, I think it works really well. And then you just, in the exam, you only just play this one chromatic exercise. You're not sort of worrying about which chromatic scale you're being asked within the exam. But yes, it, I would, my biggest tip with that is just starting in a really nice, comfortable area and expanding outwards, whether it's expanding, learning how to play a bit lower or learning to play a bit higher. Um, the other tip that I really think is important is preparation without music. So it's nice to have the musical guide so that you know where the scale starts and where or where the pattern starts and where it ends. But chromatic material especially works really well when it's learnt in a memorised form and usually from the earliest moment if it can be learnt more memorised. So you're bringing your ear into the game rather than just remembering fingerings. Because of course on horn, you know, fingerings are not the difficult part of what we do. It's hearing as we go. Okay. Fantastic. And finally, we'll move on to um, exercise 4C. Um, so if we can look at 4C, this is just a really small but invaluable exercise. Um, it, it covers, it's a basically a very simple mixed interval exercise, but covers many factors. So nice full sound, nice free um, accents achieved with the use of air as well as um, coordinated articulation but it's also very much a pitching exercise um, it, when a student has sort of confident internal sense of pitch and understanding of these very sim simple intervals as seen on the basis of, a, of an F major scale um, it yeah it works really well and so we're looking to try and achieve a really good sound quality as you move up and as you move down over that um, interval 
Great, and so this that exercise in particular is a really essential one when moving into level two. So just with the, the scales in general, so the scales, we've actually placed the technical material prior to the scales within the context of the exam. This is the, the playing, especially once um, horn players have played their repertoire, it's really nice to be relaxed a little bit more, get the chance to do long notes and a nice slur before you move into the scales. It's a nice sort of, nice way to pace it through. Um, but with, for the most part, the number of scales has been reduced. Um, they've been chosen for ease of key in terms of key signature, but also the suitability of playing on the horn, both with the sound of the scale and also um, the range. So we have the, there are a couple of interesting moments, but we have to choose those scales based on what the player is um, capable of the, playing the range over, which is why, you know, in first grade you don't play F major scale, even though it is one of the easiest scales that we play, it isn't over the whole range of the instrument. Um, my, my biggest tip with preparing scales is to pre prepare the material in a really nice melodic way, to remind them that scales are in fact melodies, um, breathing in a predictable location, which with these scales you can always breathe after the top note. So, so that you're not stopping and starting mid-scale. It's often when some sort of pitching errors can occur. Um, yeah, and, and it's really worth practicing um, starting the scales and being really confident on the note that pitching correctly, um, especially when you move more into third grade and fourth grade, there is an expectation that students can start those notes correctly. They're not being guided by the examiner to find their correct start notes. Um, so that's basically covering um, the technical material um, very quickly. So I'm sure David will let me know if there are any questions about that. But we will otherwise we'll move on to the, all the new grade books, which are very exciting to me. And I've already enjoyed working on them for the last month or so since the release. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the big change with these two is that we now have preliminary with horn and we haven't had preliminary before. So preliminary as a grade is a very sort of compact, very early beginner sort of situation. So with preliminary, so my idea with, um, with going through these grade books, I don't have time to go through all of the pieces, but I just thought I'd pick out some of the pieces that stick out to me that I find really musically engaging and, and also a little sort of point of difference. I think a big thing when um, for at all levels, um, whether it's level one or level two or level three, for a really well-rounded horn player, as well as an expectation in the exam that you present um, a varied repertoire, um, the students who, even from the earlier stages, provide um, contrasting repertoire in their material really find it easier to progress. So that might be in preliminary, choosing one that's got a few more slurs or that's a bit more tongued or um, faster or slower, just a different style of music. Moving into, by the time you're at grade four, making sure you pick a piece that might be you know, a little bit more, not old fashioned, but older music. There's a few choices that are quite, you know, written in the 1800s. Um, and then contrasting that with something more modern, making sure that there's something more lyrical, making sure there's something that emphasizes good articulation. So looking for your varied repertoire within, um, within your exam program is really important. Um, yes, so in, in the preliminary book, um, definitely one of my favourite pieces and I'm really proud that it's made it into the book is the Maranoa Lullaby. That's list A number three. It does actually have an added note that's out of the strict preliminary range, but I found that it worked really well um, for, even for beginning students because contextually adding that A is actually quite easy. You know, it's not a sudden A out of nowhere. You sort of led up to it from the G and it's, it's really pretty song um, in a very sort of song-like style. Um, it's also, there are a few pieces, especially in the lower grades, that align a little bit to repertoire that might be found in a classroom music environment. So this piece is definitely one that um, younger students may have found when they, within classroom music. So that's good. Um, I also really like list A number four, Winter Our Day. Um, throughout all of these new grade books, there are many 
examples of duo so this it says to be stressed this is only for preparation this isn't to be performed as a duet but um, you know the existence of duets as preparation is really really invaluable especially on the horn where pitching and developing a good sense of pitch is, is an issue um, so you could start off in the teaching environment playing along with the student but then moving to your own part the teacher could play their own part the lower part and the student has to hold on strongly to their top part which actually really solidifies and makes them more confident in pitching you also then have the student automatically aligning to a, a you know a concept of sound provided by the teacher um, and then control of tempo and rhythm and you know, all of those sort of things. So all of these duos as they go through the grade books um, hopefully will be a lot of fun and nice for the teachers to, have, to play a different part and often quite low too, which should be fun um, in the teaching environment. Um, yes, and good also for um, just building a, as a concept of inter intonation, like hearing this, you know, hearing the intonation with the two notes together. Um, moving on to list B number one, this for me song of joy um, is just the ultimate starter piece if you have an if you have an early beginner and they need to perform something um, with piano this is just ideal um, and it's for so many reasons but not least of which the students know the piece and they all will easily play it with a good free sound quality and they'll play the tune that they have in their head um, a couple of practice tips with this one is to one is to just sing the tune and just do fingers at the same time so it's just typical beginner practice techniques and also buzzing through it is quite a good exercise as well so that's that's a, like a really good starting point with students in this book and moving on to list C um, the I really like list C number three um, Let's see, number three is Secret Mission. It ha it's full of character. It has an opportunity for the player to play with a little bit more drama. Um, there's a little bit of rhythmic challenge, but with a lot of these pieces, the rhythmic challenge is easily negotiated because this, the sense of melody is so strong. So it's quite easy for the ear to remember the rhythm, even if the rhythm itself isn't so well understood. Um, it's a really melodic, melodically catchy song. It's a little bit of an earworm. Um, but it's really it's particularly good for F side starters so those students who start playing as a beginner on F side because it has a lot of D's and F's and so it's really building this nice confidence between um, playing playing those notes that you play on first valve um, yeah so that's that's preliminary um, and I will move on to grade one So moving on to grade one, um, one of the pieces I really enjoy and enjoy teaching is list A number four, Samba Lele. So Samba Lele, um, again, has a little bit more of a rhythmic challenge, but in itself, it, pr it provides maybe some um, opportunities for different styles of learning. Even if you're working in a group, you could have, uh, like if you have a small group class, you know, you could have some players clapping the beat and then the other players playing the syncopation. Um, it also provides for, for list A in terms of achieving sort of the technical requirements for list A. Um, it has both a light sort of st almost staccato tongued style um, contrasted with the slurs that occur. So it's really important that there's those two things are made obvious. It's, you know, it's quite simple for um, grade one, but making sure that there's a nice um, Lifted articulation. And contrasted with the. So you have nice opportunities to tongue and slur within the same piece. Moving on to list B. Um, and many of these list Bs are really just nice um classical classical romantic style um tunes uh, but i picked out to talk about um list b number three the minuet in g major 
This is really nice because it is just using scale technique and awareness of, you know, steps, um, moving through steps of the scale, but then also playing this nice, this really beautiful melody um, and also a piece that many students are familiar with already, which makes it a lot easier. Um, one little tip is that moving up to the, into the high C, sort of towards the end of the first line, um, to think about blowing beyond the C. So we're not trying to use our air to get us up to the C, but in fact to take it, take into the octave downwards. So, and preparing even the first two bars, you blow really well through that sort of upwards steps of a fifth, and then that will also move it's a very similar feel when you move a little bit higher. So it's a good example of um, playing into slightly higher range, but doing it where it's a bit more contextually easy. You're not put under strain as a player moving into the high range. Um, in list C, definitely, definitely a, a big favorite is the Medallion Calls from Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, this, yeah, it, <laughs> it seems to be a very popular one for people to practice. So if you perhaps have a student who is a bit slow to practice and really needs to, you know, ha get their teeth into a tune that they will enjoy, this is the this is the one. And it works really well within the range and it's comfortable on the face. Um, the imagery of what occurs at this moment, you can actually watch the clip of it on YouTube, um, but you've got Jack Sparrow's ship sailing into the harbour and gradually sinking as it sails in. So there's a really strong imagery for those, you know, kids who maybe have enjoyed learning, starting to learn horn and like the movie factor of the horn as an instrument being always included in movie, movie music, this is a piece that's actually possible and easy to play at this, at this sort of more simple level. Um, yeah, it's, um, it has a couple of little um, rhythmic challenges in it as well, but within the phrase, they fall into place really easily. That's um, grade one. So moving on to grade two. In grade two, um, I do really like list A number one. Again, this is another example of duos being used for preparation in order to make it a more stable performance when the player plays list A on their own unaccompanied in the exam. Um, this really features a dotted rhythm with a nice clear articulation style. And of course, getting that rhythm to be really settled is a lot easier when you're playing along with someone else um, and it might be an opportunity as well for both the student and the teacher to play the subdivisions of the semi-quavers semi -quavers as well. Um, it's in a really nice comfortable key um, but also works on, because it's a comfortable key, it works, it's a really good time to work on intonation and yeah so Duvernoy wrote these, there's a couple of Duvernoy pieces. There's one in second grade and one in fourth grade. It actually comes from an original method book for the horn that was published in the early 1800s. Um, really nice to be including both new studies that have just been written for the purpose of these books and also, you know, material that was written for natural horn when the very first study books were written for the instrument. So we've got this nice um, use of older material and newer material. Um, list A number three is also very, very popular, Mo Li Hua. Um, very good for a student that needs to work more on learning how to play with an idea of line through the phrase. Um, there are really, there are great moments to breathe. So it's a really good piece to, to choose again, a bit like the lip slurs where you can play the phrase and then relax a little bit more and breathe really well in between the phrases and including nice slurs within the context of the melody. well-known tune but um, really nice on the instrument again moving into the upper range and back but with a nice maintaining the quality of sound as doing so. 
Um, moving on to uh, list B number two, a big favorite of mine is the Dusik Lesson. Um, it's just lively, spirited, has a few more slightly tricky intervallic jumps. So it's not so much step motion, but a little bit more jumping. But again, it's one of those tunes that's a little bit of a, an earworm. Um, so just a nice tune it's quite a good tune that, to be used as well for other performances that a student might need to do or even for competitions it's got a good good um, presentation factor to it um, and in list c uh, another piece by kerry thomas that i really enjoy um, is A Hero Is Called. Now this is set a little bit lower, it's using a lot more of sort of A minor at the beginning. Um, sometimes students struggle a little bit with playing low A's, but um, this has a really nice sort of juxtaposition of this, this kind of darker moment in the beginning is, and create, and then there's drama where it becomes a bit more strong and up-tempo in the F major. Um, at bar 10, it's a little bit of a poco pium also. Um, it's very sort of rousing. It can get a lot of emotion, emotion going with students. Um, so I would highly recommend looking at that piece. And we might move on to grade three. So within grade three, there are many, many great pieces. Um, I do really like list A number one, La Sainte Hubert, which really comes from that um, history of real hunting horn, um, natural horn tradition. So there's a lot of character, it would be a lot, a lot of fun to play, not just with um, teacher and student, but perhaps with two students. There's some really fantastic atmospheric um, recordings on YouTube of French style players playing it with um, as the horn originated so but it's also really really good a bit more six eight working into six eight clear articulation um, articulating with clarity but as you progress through the phrase and also maintaining the energy through dynamic changes so making sure that the tempo is maintained whether it's forte or piano that sort of idea of a hunting horn up close and a hunting horn in the forest far away the the tempo needs to remain the same either way and um, in list b number one i really like simple gifts again it's a bit like mo li hua in um in um grade two Simple Gifts is an opportunity to play a really nice phrase. Um, there's no sort of sudden high notes. Everything is brought to in, within context, nice gradually. Um, and it can, it's, good, it's a good time to encourage students to be a little bit more expressive with their music making. Um, it's got breath. So, so this time you have to, you definitely will have to learn to breathe a little bit more quickly. Um, between phrases, but um, it is really good for learning how to phrase well and conceiving of music in these musical sentences, which does make it easier to play on the horn. It's also an E flat major, which I always think is, is just the best key to play on as a horn player. So a little bit more challenge with having A flats and things like that to play, but um, the sound is worth it to be in that key. Um, List B number four, Grand Vols Villageoise, the Sleeping, Sleeping Beauty Waltz. Um, really a definite favourite, really accessible. It's a really good starting point again if you wanted to start with one piece out of this book. It's very comfortable, comfortable to play. It might be, it might seem like it's one of the longer pieces, but of course it just flows through very quickly. Um, it's really good. Um, for developing this nice free full sound quality if it's very well, well on the instrument so if a student has had a couple of weeks of maybe feeling a bit strained or a bit caught with their playing this is probably the piece to play and you know teachers always could help along by um, waltzing alongside as they play um, <laughs> but yeah it's really good for a concept of longer phrases as well it's much easier to play when it's a little bit faster and you can play through the phrase in one breath um, 
but just a really pretty and well-known tune as well. Very, very good for sound quality. And within list C, I think this list C of third grade is um, particularly interesting and rewarding. It's a particularly interesting group of pieces. Um, they're all a bit more modern choices. There's been, a, you know, there was a lot of effort to bring in something that was a bit more different types of modern music, you know, into the list C's with, within all of the grades. Um, Kathy's Dream by Lachlan Davidson is has some rhythmic um, challenges on paper but again the, the melody is so strong that the rhythm is actually very easy to become accustomed to and it's a very successful piece played with piano so that it works really well as piano with the piano um, it's got a nice sort of lyrical basis to it but with some nice syncopated rhythm um, hunt is on is a great piece as well that's the list c number one um, and then list C number three, Ocean Blue, has much more of a contemporary, you know, 2000s feel of harmony. Um, really good. It covers a lot of things like playing easily over, over range changes, confidence in playing 6-8. And Emma Gregan, composer from Adelaide, based, horn player based in Adelaide, she um, has been kind enough to create also a teacher um, part to play along with the student, which helps the student hear these slightly less, um, you know, well, definitely less than classical style of harmony. So um, re really good piece. And it's definitely a piece that seems to appeal to those students that might be, you know, in middle school and a little bit older. This is just, it's just a bit more interest, but really good at this grade level. And finally, we'll move on to my favorite grade. Um, so, so many pieces in this grade, um, I, I like for so many reasons. Um, this, all of the studies, the list A, um, number one, is great because just if, if a student needs that contrast of more of a song-like um, piece or they, they're still developing their sense of phrase or their sense of legato, list A, number one, is, you know, a very good classic to work on. List A, number two, is another one of the Duvernoy original horn method pieces um, and a bit more sort of technique required with this very very stable rhythm so despite the semi of keeping the keeping the pulse very regular and being able to tongue easily and clearly over the range um, with list a number three i definitely would consider this one of the harder pieces in this book um, it's from, you know, it's fr it's from the Anton Horner Primary Studies for the Horn book, which I think is one of those books which is essential for students to work through. And the more they work through it, the better they are in the future. So it is an excellent book. And this is probably this is one of the best studies in the book. It has a lot of contrast in a short amount of time. The way I see this study is whilst it is difficult, it's a good sign of whether students are ready both musically and physically to move on to grade five. If a student can play this study, then you know that they are ready to they are ready to pro progress into the you know more sophisticated requirements that you get within grade five. So it has you know tempo change, articulation change, mixed intervals, unusual pitching through the meno mosso and the slurs, um, but it's also very musically engaging to play through as well yeah enjoyable to practice um and restless list a number four is also great it has you know staccato as well downward slurs um really nice key to play in um going on to list b number one canzonetta was originally found at the end of the learn as you play book by peter wastel and this is another book alongside the anton horner um, which I think is very, very valuable for this level of um, horn player. I mean, obviously, many, many teachers use this book as their method book up until grade four, between sort of about first well, preliminary level and grade four. So that Learn as, Learn as You Play book is fantastic. Um, and this piece is a really, really good example. Um, it's it sort of in its simplicity, it's an opportunity for a lot of expression. It lends itself really well, again, to being a competition piece because the player can play quite comfortably at this level, but play with a little bit more sense of tenderness and 
expression understanding of the character of the song um yes definitely um and definitely sound too so it's it's it is definitely a piece that highlights both sound and expression um with list b number two la Prentice sorcier sorcerer's apprentice um a little bit more of a challenge with the um with the key signature and the key um once you get over the a flats um and the you know and the change all the accidentals and stuff there's a bit of a challenge but there are many students who really know this piece and love playing it. Um, the rhythm has to be very, very regular. Of course, it makes sense to build it up by playing it slower and making it faster and not just starting fast and <laughs> instantly getting slow when it gets difficult, um, especially through some of the longer um, quaver passages it makes a lot of sense to start by practicing the very end of the phrase and then adding little bits to it i'm talking sort of if you you know if you have the music in front of you from around bar 34 work on bar 34 work on bar 33 and sort of add to it that way rather than starting at the beginning of the phrase and running out of air by the end of it um yep and list b number four tramurai um i've also found Whilst it's got a little, it is, is quite sophisticated musically, um, it seems to be a popular choice amongst students. It definitely has some technical challenges. Again, really stressing the importance of the beauty of sound as you progress through those upward slurs. Um, when working on this one, um, and, and learning how to play with tasteful rubato too, it's a bit of a challenge, but learn to slur the first line really well with ease. Then you can. Then the second line will become a little bit easier, and then by the fourth line, which has probably got one of the, the harder moments, if you've done the first line well and it's without strain, then you know it doesn't take long before you build the skills up to do the, the fourth line. So yes, there's some really interesting. I mean, all the list B's are great, but they, those ones sort of stick out to me. Um, in the launch in December, um, I did play Swashbuckler, which is list C number one. It's a fantastic piece, super popular with students, has some obvious rhythmic challenges being in 12-8 dotted rhythms, change of feel, so they've, it's more of a heroic opening and then a bit of a smoother moment through the middle, key changes, accidentals, but because the melody is so strong, it's definitely a, a piece that students gravitate towards, so it's really worth investigating it. Um, and then, <laughs> Possibly my favourite piece in the whole collection and the piece that I really wanted to see placed on this list um, for pedagogical reasons, as well as the fact that I just really like the tune, um, is Baby Elephant Walk. So Baby Elephant Walk at the end, so it's list C number four. Um, it has, we've got this very simple C major arpeggio figure that's the main sort of theme of the Baby Elephant Walk. Um, learning to blow really easily to the high E, but because you have to blow a bit of the phrase afterwards, it's, it makes it a little bit easier to support into the high E and beyond. Um, and I believe that, you know, it's really important at fourth grade for students to have a much better understanding and control of their right hand. So fourth grade is the grade where the, the right hand position or the hand in the bell position is is an important factor to consider so and this is the piece that can really make that occur hopefully with some, some fun along the way so you can see that there are some sort of dip moments sort of which i'll play in a second but they have sort of a scoop upwards um, and a really good way of preparing for that first is just to play the note so there are a lot of them on um, a g flat so and then if you just wave your hand in the bell, you can, you can ask the student to move their hand in, in the bell and see what effects they can get. So if they've got their hand in the correct position, it's quite easily achieved, but... Really important to keep physically, like in the mouth, playing the G flat and relying only on the hand to do the bending. So then you can get this sort of effect happening and it's it's good because then we can we can learn how the hand can be used to help with general intonation through the course of playing as well um i also there's also included at the very end 
option. It's option only of flutter tonguing and stop torn. And it's definitely something that can start that conversation with students about what you know what stop torn is. Often stop stopping takes a few years to really come to work well for students, but then just showing them what it's about means that in the future it'll be a little bit easier. Um, and that yeah, it's just a nice effect to have. Um, if and I've had students you know sight read it and be able to flutter and stop it at the same time just because they've come to flutter tongue in quite easily they're excited to do to do it they're not being sort of dragged into doing it so <laughs> so nice to have that that moment at the end of the piece so that's just a rough, quick overview of all the grade book pieces. Um, if in that rough overview I've missed the piece that's your favourite piece, do let me know um, and I can always go back and um, answer it in the questions or if there's any questions about the pieces. But there's hopefully you can see with this collection that there's a broad range of sort of very typical horn style classical playing, encouraging you to play with a centered sound and then more melodic free um, building sound things as well as then moving into um, some different sound qualities and variations. Um, I wanted to now just talk a little bit about the changes in the manual list in level one. I mean, the main ch changes that have occurred in level one are just that many of the books that have been on the list for years and years fell out of print, um, maybe, you know, in 1970, 1980. So the books still exist, but no one else can actually purchase them. So we've moved. Um, so some of some of the changes have occurred just simply because people can't access those books anymore. Um, of course, you know, the major change with the manual list is that there's now preliminary. And so the way um, we approached preliminary was because so many students do start in a group or an ensemble situation and they use the ensemble books. So there is a way to use those ensemble books within the exams or the pieces that they've learnt, as long as it's sitting within the range. So I'm pr primarily sort of talking about the books used like Essential Elements and Standard of Excellence. Um, so those books, you can play the tunes that have been worked on in class in, in the exam at the preliminary level, should you want to and should you not um, use the grade books that Amy B have printed. Um, yeah, and other than that, there are a few sort of highlight new introductions for, for books that have been introduced into, um, into the manual list if you're looking for a new repertoire to add. So from preliminary to grade four, there are several of the Spark books. So Philip Spark has written some series of books. Um, he has starter solos, skillful solos, starter... Starter studies, skillful studies. I tried to say that the wrong way around, but there's too many S's. Anyway, so starter studies and skillful studies, I particularly enjoy very strong um, musical character behind each piece that has a very clear technical goal. So it's, it's easy to achieve the technical goals because the musical musical goal is so obvious. Um, and the starter solos and the skillful solos are then you know tunes that are available with piano part. The other series of books that have been introduced into the manual list um, are ones from the Winners series of books. So these books came out, you know, 15 years ago. So um, there's well, some of them longer than that. Easy Winners, um, Winners Scores All, Winners Galore. Basically, if you see any books with winners in the title, there is there, there's some really interesting pieces to work on. And they're particularly aimed at those students who are really driven by playing well-known tunes, tunes from movies, from TV, from musicals, well-known well known popular songs, but they have been a little bit more carefully curated so that they fit the instrument, um, so they're not pieces that go out of range, they, they sit really well, that you can play musically, but there's a technical um, element to it as well. It's, it's something to emphasize with these books though, that um, they're 
there's a lot of interesting repertoire, but the piano part has to be sourced separately. So the books come with a whole range of different tunes, but then you must go and find also the piano books, which sometimes take a bit of ordering in. But there's some really not really good pieces, some popular things, such as Pink Panther and um, in fourth grade, there's 633 Squadron, which um, is not a movie that I know, but I have now discovered that many of my students do. Anyway, <laughs> that there's, with, with a really good strong horn um, sort of feel to it. Um, there's also in second grade, third grade and fourth grade, the Lizzie Davis collection Hornet's Nest, really work well worth a look. Um, from third grade, there are some pieces included from um, a new collection called the Latino, Latino Collection. Um, it's from memory, Robert Ramskill, who has written a lot of other, he writes really well for brass instruments. Um, and so there's more of sort of Latin pieces. It, it actually goes into grade five as well, that book. And um, in fourth grade, a little, one of my sort of favorite little standalone pieces is the Demars Berserz. It's a really beautiful piece. It's got a little, little bit more tenderness, and nice, nice to play something French as well. So that is all the manual list. And I think I've dashed through that nice and quickly. Hopefully I haven't been talking too quickly. Lizzie Davis. Yes, that is, that was Lizzie Davis. Um, it's, yeah, Hornet's Nest. From memory, it's published by Brass Wind, but I can check that up. Um, that's a really nice co collection of pieces. Um, yeah, but it's now is a really good time if you have questions that I can answer some. Have a look, Lizzie Davis. Yes. Anything? Anything that you would like to add, David? Anything that I've missed? No, no, that was a really um, covered quite a bit there. Um, no <laughs> questions have come in. So it means you've done a really good job or everyone's a bit shy out there. Um, <laughs> but I think um, I, I've, having worked on this with you, I've really enjoyed sort of the process and sort of your reasoning behind some of the pieces you've chosen, um, especially the sort of focus on also the, the low horn and the high horn sort of repertoire as well. I don't know if you want to elaborate a little more on that. Um... Well, I mean, I get like, I, well, my personal opinion is if we work into the low range and we use use our air really well and freely into the low range, that also enables us to play well into the high range. I really like viewing the instrument that sort of go, view, viewing the instrument as um, something that goes both upwards and downwards. Um, and especially coming from a history of where the horn, sometimes the horn repertoire has been tacked on as just using some sometimes trumpet. And of course, trumpet has a bit of a, a ceiling at the end, whereas we want to sort of move lower. And I know, know uh, with my own students at a very early age, I enable them to explore the low range, but without any, you know, too much stress. And it, they do then learn to blow through a little bit more freely, um, which does assist in the high range. But yeah. um, yeah, so especially if you look at um, fourth grade, it's, you can see that there's a clear goal to move both, if you've got F as your central note, you go up an octave and down an octave. And my preference would be, if you look at the scales in fourth grade, there's um, F major and F minor, I think, definitely F major. Um, my preference in preparation, because you, the students now have a choice of whether they'd like to play the upper scale or the lower scale. Is the pre pre the preference is to learn both um, octaves at once, and then you can always just pick your best uh, best octave when you actually get to the exam or you know a couple yeah. of days prior, and that carries really well bringing it into what happens in grade five because at grade five of course we know that there are a lot more um, two octave scales less than there used to be but there are you know several several two octave scales and we don't want to suddenly go from one octave over a reduced range to two octaves it's quite a big jump normally that occurs so f is a really good place to start with that two octave range yep um another question i was going to ask you just about the uh, choice of australian composers mm -hmm. and working with some of the, the, the notable horn players that we that are also composers um and some of the, the the works that have been written specifically for the books yeah yeah so i mean and i didn't mention in fourth grade and i you know regret well, i'll mention it now but um yeah so we've got emma gregan who is a horn player in the adelaide symphony orchestra um 
and a really well-known composer for horn, internationally recognised as a great horn composer. He's written a lot of um, ensemble stuff, has a really good feel uh, and a very new sort of flavour in her composition too, as, yeah, it's really worth a listen. All of her pieces too are in, available to watch on YouTube. So um, this cassowary, ocean blue and <laughs> escape to Jupiter. Jupiter anyway in second grade so she's if you look up Emma on YouTube you can watch all of those pieces um Cassowary is a fantastic piece in in grade four it has a lot it's it's really um appealing to those students who might be a little bit more musically creative or have a bit more colorful way of playing because you have a lot more freedom in the way you deliver you know it's, it's very sort of long bars that you can play at your own tempo um and i've had some you know quite a few students interested in that piece already um with a bit more of a bit more of a challenge but within still the structure of what is grade four level i've got carrie thomas who is a brisbane horn player horn teacher and composer, writes really well in that sort of slightly jazzy idiom. We've got um, Adrian Hallam who did the sight reading. He's got a few of his pieces that are included. Um, there are three pieces from Lachlan Davidson who isn't a horn player, but honestly, I think the way he writes for the horn, he might as well be a horn player in my opinion. Um, <laughs> so his pieces across grade two, three and four yeah fit the instrument really well so yeah so the Lachlan Davidson and Emma Gregan and Kerry Thomas pieces were all written in particular for these collections and are new to to everyone to the world it's you know to experience these books yeah it's exciting yeah these books yeah are very um special I think there's a such a diversity of horn styles and, and playing and also the sort of world music aspect of some of the pieces as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it gives a very sort of interesting range of pieces for people to play. Keeps the choice. <laughs> I, hope, I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it doesn't look like many more questions have come in. Um, do you want to briefly just... Oh, oh hello. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to um, briefly just talk about any of the, the sight reading transposition at the lower level, I know it transposition is very early, um, gets introduced very early um, into sort of horn playing as well. I don't, I don't know if just putting you on the spot, but did you no, want to? No, no well, I mean, look, in my experience, um, transposition is always better learnt young. So, you know, it, primarily if you get the opportunity, people don't always have the opportunity, but transposition is really easily learnt for kids before they turn 12 essentially it's that same sort of time where um you know they can pick up languages more easily before they start overthinking so um so in the new um transposition and sight reading book there are actually um exercises to transpose at a second grade level that you can then um bring like you don't have to, you don't do transposition at a second grade level in exam, but you could, by preparing that at second grade, you're ready to move on. So by the time it comes to third grade, it happens. And so, and the examples shown in the sight reading book, there are to start off with just tunes. It's always easier to transpose a tune that's clear in your ear, so you can understand the process of going down a tone and playing that tune down a tone before moving into the real sort of exercises that would occur in an exam. So, yeah, hope Great. that answers the question. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> definitely give some insight. Um, great, well, I think that might be uh, all we have time for today. The New Horn Syllabus, grade books and other resources are available now via your local music shop, via amyb.edu.au uh, amyb and via other online sheet music retailers. Thank you once again to the Amy B. Horn Syllabus and Publications team, Esau Clark, of course, Daryl Paulson, Tina Brain, Linda Hewitt, and Julia Tucson Jackson, as well as the sight reading composer, Adrian Hallam, our editing and proofreading team, and the many Australian and international composers whose works make these books so very good. Thanks also to the behind the scenes Amy B. team, Bernard De Pasquale, Amy B. CEO, and Helena Jones, Maxine Day, and Alana Codwell for making this workshop possible. And last but certainly not least, to everyone who has attended this workshop, we're very proud of the new Amy B. Horn Series 2 publications and new syllabus. 
We hope they serve the Hong community as a useful and inspiring resource for years to come. Thanks again. Thanks, Isolde. Thanks. And Bye. goodbye. <laughs>